Welcome to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your hosts, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. All right, we are live and ready with another podcast episode of Hustle and Flow Chart uh, with myself, your host, Joe Fear, partner over there across the desk is Matt Wolf. And today we're with Cody Bramlett out of, uh, out of Vegas now, right? Used to be yes, from sir. San Diego. Um, yeah, so we met Cody. Matt probably met him actually a little bit prior to me, but at uh, Henry Evans's mastermind slash all the meetings. He was a previous podcast guest that we had probably a couple months ago now. And uh, dude, you've been kind of you've done a lot. And honestly, I'm, I don't know your background too much. I know you did a lot of kettlebell uh, training at your own gym in San Diego, but you kind of moved on, sold that business, went out to Vegas, and. Uh, now you're just rolling at the casinos all the time, you know? It's, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, so thanks for popping on the show here and, and uh, let's dig into it. So just just briefly, I guess, give us like a maybe a two-minute synopsis of kind of the time we met you or maybe right, right around before, you know, the kettlebell time, working yeah, the day job. Yeah. Definitely. So I've always been an entrepreneur at heart, always thought about it, always wanted to do it, went to school thinking that like business management would be the key to kind of understand it all and that was sorely mistaken. <laughs> um, and But back in the day, I even knew I would need to be an entrepreneur of some kind. I was always trying to figure out a way to um, keep it simple and just basically do better what everyone else is already doing. Mm. And so I, I, as a young kid, dealt with being heavier and having weight issues. So I got really into exercise into high school and in college. And one of the things I, I discovered was a kettlebell. And so I knew right then and there, there's no such thing as a kettlebell studio. I need to start making these like mini gyms and put them everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. turns out that industry is a lot more complicated than I wanted to deal with, mainly because it's um, fighting the competition and a lot of just uh, bad thought process by the mainstream public of how easy it is to exercise and how easy it is to get results. And only people that have truly like lost weight or achieved real results and worked for it really understand how much work you have to put into it. Mm -hmm. right. And so it was just dealing with people who were looking for quick fixes and then blaming you 60 days later when they lost 15 pounds and didn't say it was enough. And you're like what? <laughs> so it, it was a, it was a lot of, um, a lot of that. So I was dealing with a lame, lame crowd of people that was, um, for the most part hard to deal with. Now don't get me wrong. I had a crew, crew of people that were phenomenal to work with both trainers and clients that I just, I miss every day cause I don't get to train with them and see them. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, dealing with a lot of the crowd was, was not fun and a little bit of soul sucking. And one of the biggest things that bugged me in that, in that gym industry was the amount of lies people were fed about their nutrition and supplements. And mm -hmm. so teaching people nutrition wasn't the hardest thing in the world, just had to get them on a plan and show them the results. But then showing them supplementation and what they're missing was complicated because there's so many huge billion dollar companies out there and multi-million dollar companies that are just feeding lies. I mean, you can go to Costco right now and just read labels and get sold on just the label alone by oh, how yeah. much fluff is, is, is being pushed. And then in the online space, it's even worse. There's just lies and lies and lies going out about sometimes really good products and sometimes absolutely worthless products. Mm -hmm. So... I decided the philosophy of, of um, science, natural supplements, my current company, and our tagline is simple, real, and only what you need. And that kind of stands behind the philosophy of everything I've been working towards and all my mistakes led me to this concept of just keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> or complicate things. You don't need to make things crazy, unique, and different and innovate out of the industry. You just need to do what everyone else is doing, but 10% better. Mm -hmm. And so, this, we chose, yeah. Yeah, so we chose to make something simple products that were clean, that were are what they are, and there's not a lot of fluff or special magic to it. It's just like, this is what it is. And so I started uh, researching how to put together a company, put it together, found manufacturers, worked with different um, people who have been in the industry longer than me to kind of craft my first sales pages, and then um, geared everything towards affiliate marketing, which we can talk about too, mm -hmm. to try and get the company off the ground. And it's been phenomenal. We've done over $5 million in the last uh, 14 months. How cool. Awesome. That's awesome. So what, what's the process like of actually sourcing? Um, like if somebody wanted to just start a similar supplement company, what, what's that process like to, to actually find a place to get these supplements made? Yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward and simple. We have the thing called the Internet. So <laughs> we just type supplement manufacturer or makeup manufacturer or, you know, tire manufacturer, whatever industry you want to get into. And you just Google the crap out of it until you find the people that work best with you. And it, it, it's taken dozens and dozens of phone calls and talking to people to find the right match that worked what I want and fit with the philosophies that I had, had the same drive, the same energy, and had the willingness to work with me. Because a lot of times companies get phone calls from people all the time, and it's a waste of their energy. They get burned out. But when you find someone who's actually excited to work with a new company, 
because they believe in what you're doing or they believe in the concept that you're uh, behind or at least they are in that same pattern. Because like, for example, supplement companies, there's companies that only really work with big box kind of like Costco's and Walmart's and they're used to that concept mm -hmm. and used to putting an order in and fulfilling it three months later. Whereas, you know, I need things that happen on the fly. So I had to find companies that were willing to jive with that philosophy and that energy. So, so just research. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess when you're researching, cause I know there's a lot of fluff and just garbage out there online, but obviously there's diamonds in the rough too. Are there, a sp is there a specific question you're asking these people when you get them on the phone or in an email? to know that you're getting kind of these pure ingredients and these basically the simple products that you're looking after? Well, flat out, it's when you go to a used car dealership, that weird feeling you get, if you get that in the first second or two, you know you're in the wrong spot. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about like, if you went into a Tesla store, you feel comfortable, you feel safe, you feel <laughs> no worries at all, no pressure, because they know you're gonna buy it eventually. Yeah. So that's the kind of person you wanna be able to work with, someone who is just low pressure and, and simple. Like, for example, we wanna buy my wife a new car. I went to a Honda dealership to check out a vehicle when she was at work, because I had the time. And they called me four times in the next 24 hours, even though I said, do not call me. If you call me, I will not be buying a car from you. Specific mm -hmm. words to the mm -hmm. guy's face. So if someone's gonna be like that needy and grabby to you, there's something not right. Yep. So you gotta just always, Go with your gut on that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, are you using, are, are these formulations and the supplements you sell, are they your formulations or are they sort of pre-existing? There's, there's my philosophy again, keep it simple, stupid. So uh, if I, so if I, my, my lead product is a turmeric product. Uh -huh. I didn't go out and make a custom formula that was 10% different from everything else every company was making. I went with a standard formula because the standard formula is the one that studies have been done on. The standard formula is the one that's been sold day in and day out. It's the one that companies manufacture and understand and know, and it's also something that can be replenished and refilled fast. So if something takes off, you know you can. Now, I'm never opposed to like making something cool and unique, especially when you have traffic target, uh, you, know, you know your market, you know something's moving, and you also uh, have the funds to handle it. But when you're starting out, don't reinvent the wheel. It's, it's absolutely silly. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, it, it seems like if you compare your previous business, because when you're in the kettlebell industry or in that gym space, it seemed like you were a little ahead of the time, you know, before kettlebells got too mainstream, at least because I, I remember back then I had, I think I bought a kettlebell and most people were like, what the hell is that cannonball with a handle on it? Exactly. Yeah. And, and in that aspect, I definitely was ahead of the curve on it. I mean, I came from a gym that was ahead of the head of the curve when I originally learned how to do it. Right. Um, but in terms of reaching a small niche market in a town and neighborhood with something unique and different and new, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. But doing it on the web is not. Right. So it's now it easy. seems like you're yeah. totally leveraged. I mean, you're, you're using leverage more than before. You're using yourself, a physical space. Yes. It's, it's, it's a complete 180, you know? Exactly. Like if I, lo I look back at the gym, and if I ever started or ever wanted to start another one, I would have gone to the main competitor, CrossFit, mm -hmm. affiliated with them, joined their little cult, but then made my own version of it. Because mm -hmm. all the successful gym owners I've met have been a part of something else, but been the best at it. Right. And, so, and that's the kind of thing I would have done. Because in that aspect, you're so small and you're so, uh, you know, in order to get a crowd of people, they have to kind of know what you are first. And then you introduce them to the cool stuff. But whereas when you're online, you can, all, you can just introduce someone to, a cool, to a cool stuff off the bat because you're, you're sending your email with all the different fields you went out to went to a couple, went to a couple million people not to a couple thousand in your neighborhood. Mm, so right. you're able to reach that crowd so much easier. And, you know, I've, I've only had about, I think, 30,000 customers in 14, um, 14 months, which is a lot, but also Jeez. not a lot compared to people I know. Um, but that's the kind of reach I've been able to do in just a short amount of time, whereas I think the gym in like eight years might have reached 4,000 people when wow. I came in. Yeah, I mean, it's it's totally so much more scalable. Now, I'm actually really curious about the, sort of the logistics of running this business. Do you have like a, a warehouse somewhere where you're stocking all these supplements or is it are the orders going to like a fulfillment company and then just getting drop shipped out? All right. So let's go back to the philosophy. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> What's more complicated, hiring somebody to do it for you or building a warehouse, getting the systems, hiring the people and figuring it out? Mm hmm. So we're not going to do the ladder. We're going to do, the, we're gonna do the, the first one. We're going to hire someone. So right. basically, I went for their fulfillment company that was, number one, local to my manufacturer. That's huge. So if I ever find a, a different product line that's going to be from a different manufacturer, I'm going to ship from two different warehouses because getting stuff from manufacturer to warehouse is a waste of time in terms of waiting for product. So you want to keep it as close as possible so it can immediately get shipped to your customer as quick as possible. Um, 
so using fulfillment companies and then just all the tech in the world can be adapted to any tech in the world with API. So it's just having the company that's willing to integrate with someone else and go with it. Because I've, I've, I've talked to people who are, oh, you have to spend a thousand dollars and use this company, only this company to integrate. And you know what? I didn't work with those people because mm. <laughs> you're charging something that shouldn't have a charge. It should just be a part of the process of working with a business. Got it. Now, if we're, we're going back to traffic now, because I think this thing in my head, it's like, okay, you've blown this thing up so fast. And I mean, how long have you been in business with the supplement so far? We did our first email Janu- last week of January 2016. Got it. So it's been, so, it's been a little over a year. Yeah. Months, 16 months, maybe. So how did you get in front of so many people so quickly? And I'm sure it's something with affiliate marketing, potentially. Yeah, the magic <laughs> is affiliate marketing. So um, when I first started doing this stuff and I was back in Henry's group and when I went to like a, a Matt Fury seminar and stuff, it was just like, hey, SEO is easy. You literally just hire someone a few grand. They just plug your page for a bunch of stuff, put a bunch of postbacks or whatever you call those things. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly you have thousands of people look at your webpage every day because the internet was so much easier to navigate. <laughs> totally. and, and, and now it's got so much stuff. And everyone's done that. And all the companies, all the big search engines have figured out how to, how to get rid of people who are fake. Um, it's much more complicated to reach someone on a strictly organic level unless you have an innovative product. So if you are a person with a, a, a magic pill that you invented or some process or system that is literally innovative stuff you see on Shark Tank, you know, mm-hmm. that's just unique and different, then you can create a lot more buzz. But if you're just kind of doing the same thing, but better, it's a lot harder to stand out of the crowd. So you got to mm-hmm. find affiliates and affiliates is the key, in my opinion, to growing the business. Because with affiliates, I found more affiliates and I found people who are good at marketing, people who are good at um, like uh, online um, traffic that are cold traffic that then want to work with me because of this affiliate program. Mm-hmm. So affiliate programs go like this. You work with the tests with a partner you find, you make friends with whatever, whatever it is, someone you already know. And you figure out what your average cart value can be and your average profit per order. Mm-hmm. And then you give 99% of that profit to the person who's driving the traffic. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you, you're actually, like instantly getting these guys loving you up and down. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. You give everything. You don't go, oh, I'll start small and then raise it up. No. You literally do a test with somebody. You give them like 90, 95% of your profit and then everyone else gets the same thing and you push it. And everything's about averages. Law of averages, the same way Target and Walmart and Costco are, operates. You're not dealing with little pennies and here and there. Like I have some affiliates that drive a lot of traffic that's not as valuable as other affiliates that drive more valuable traffic. But everyone is basically on the same playing field with of course a few exceptions because it, it allows me to average everything out and then get everyone to participate. So I've been able to remember last month we did 10,000 customers in a launch um, of a product because we were able to get everyone on board and, and leverage the benefits of some people and the negatives of others to just build up a massive push and everyone got out, uh, got made a good money and we had $20,000 in prizes too. So I was able to just flood them with love and money and, you know, mm-hmm. thanks for mm-hmm. pushing the product and sharing it with our customers. Now, customers. now, if you, if you're offering, you know, 90, 95% commissions, um, you know, wh- where, how, how is your business, uh, growing and making money for yourself? Are you, are they getting money on like the front end and then there's some sort of rebuild that happens and then you're making all your money on the rebills or, or how does that whole work, whole thing work so that, you know, you're putting the amount of money that you need in your pocket. Exactly. So the biggest thing, like with all businesses at the beginning, you don't make money, you put it back in the business. I mean, my gym for years, unfortunately, never really hit that point where I was pulling tons of cash out. It was just kind of like, keep it growing, keep it growing. That's was the burnout too of that small size. Mm. So with this one the scale grows so quickly that if you're making only 90%, but you sold 10,000 customers, you just made a bunch of money still. Mm. So, I mean, with that little 10% margin there, you're still killing it. So uh, that's, that's number one. You have a lot of customers, a lot, I'm moving a lot of product. Um, number two is the back end. So I, I kept it simple by making the products not um, continuity, because it's hard for someone to want to give you a customer knowing that you're going to lock them in and, and charge them a bunch of money for like not for like nine months or a year, and that affiliate's not getting any benefit from it. So what I wanted to do was keep it simple on the front end, only in the front end products, so that way I can ca- capture the customer's email, and then I'm going to then show them my other four products and other four or five options of continuity, mm. as well as a bunch of third party offers in the back end. So right now we send, once you become a customer of ours, you go through a sequence for about two weeks of just learning about our philosophy and who we are and what's special and just tons of free gifts. Like I've worked with other affiliates to just share free stuff with people just so they can all get more love uh, with our customers. And then you start to sell them on other products you have and other products people offer. So, I mean, we're probably generating a couple dollars per person per month that's on the list 
Um, and people probably have about a six month lifespan on a list before they opt out or stop paying attention. So it's generated a lot of money on the back end versus the front. And the whole, my whole goal is just to get the customers so I can share more love with them. Well, it's clever. Yeah. You have, you're basically lead ginning, you know, you're getting all of these people to join you, but as buyers, not just a freebie email. So yep. immediately you're proving that these guys are engaged. They're going to listen to you. You obviously have an opportunity to follow up with them now physically in the mail. I don't know if you're doing that, but you should, mm. uh, or, you know, and an email to sell them all your other stuff. I think it's brilliant. Exactly. Yeah. Did you get all the customer's information? I have not done mailers yet. It's just uh, been a little outside of my scope of my time, but yeah. it's definitely on, on the docket for things to happen. So you're not going that that typical, because whenever I hear someone with e-commerce or supplements, 98%, maybe 99, are going on Amazon and they think Amazon's the way. That's the only way to crush it with selling e-com, you know, selling mm -hmm. these types of things online. Have yeah, you, it's an unfortunate because they're leaving so much off the table and they're also selling stuff at Walmart at a discount. Right. It's kind of, you're like you're taking your wonderful product and you're selling it at a discount. But the worst part of Amazon is they're not buying 56 pallets. They're buying one at a time. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're, you're not making that massive guaranteed profit that you see on Shark Tank and with those people that have massive deals they land with these huge companies. Right. Um, you're just basically using Amazon as a as a as a storefront and, a, house, and, a, yeah. and a fulfillment house, which is funny too, because my fulfillment house does stuff for Amazon. So it's not even, <laughs> you know, you, you don't even have to use Amazon to have Amazon kind of quality stuff. Yeah. So, so yeah, it, it definitely is. It's a waste. And at the same time too, people are so concerned with the customer opting out. That is like the biggest fear I've heard from people. You're, you meaning out of your opting out of your list? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. terrified that someone is not going to like you. So people don't email, they don't market, they don't sell, and they don't um, give, give oh, offers yeah. and stuff because someone might opt out. You're preaching to the choir on that one. Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we're, our, our philosophy with email in our business is we try to send an email every single day. <laughs> every day. Sometimes twice a day, depending on how well the, the email is doing. Well, you gotta think, yeah. You're going to filter people out immediately. The people who are going to engage and buy your shit is they're going to get off your list. If they're not a yeah. customer, bye-bye. <laughs> Something my parents always told me was shit or get off the pot. And yeah. that's what you want to have the customers do. You want ones that are using it, not, yes. not just wasting their time. No yeah. Doubt. Well, we and always, I, we, I, yeah. we always think that people are like offended by the fact that they're getting emails or something. Have you, I mean, how often are you checking your email and going, Oh, I can't believe so-and-so emailed me twice in two days. Nobody thinks that way, but in our heads, before we send emails, we tend to want to think that way. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's a strange concept. And, and, and my gym, <laughs> Uh, you know, I would annoy c clients. I'd, they'd be like, oh, God, you send too many emails, Cody. Yeah, I'd just be like, well, you should opt out then. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and guess what? None of them really did. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it, it helped because you're able to grow that business and just help, the, you know, get people excited about programs and products and sharing love. And the biggest thing is, too, is not to be the used car salesman. Mm -hmm. um, in, in our emails, you know, I, I, I've, I've now partnered with uh, someone else to help me do the emails because of time and stuff like that. Uh, and I think that some of the people are, are better at paying attention to those things. But keeping the emails simple. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple, stupid is mm -hmm. important too. You don't you don't need to write a, a long paragraph and story selling something in an email. You need someone to click on a page to go to the sales page. Right. That's if it. You're having to <laughs> if you're having to pre-sell something, then your promotion or your sales page is not good enough. So the whole goal is just to get someone to click and move over and take the next step. It also conditions them to click on your page for stuff uh, on your emails. I mean, to get stuff, and then it also uh, allows you to have a more focused place for copy because you can perfect that sales letter know that that sales is what's driving the, um, the sale not mm -hmm. the email right that makes sense now question because I, I think Matt and I and this is a selfish question but we like to well we don't choose to do it but we we will complicate shit unknowingly you know just yeah. going throughout our day making even a freaking gra or you know a name for our course for instance some new course coming out there might overthink it or whatever it might be just daily daily stuff that takes five minutes but we know we can outsource that to someone else how do you keep yourself or stop yourself or maybe check yourself from over complicating something Definitely. So I've always been that way. I wanted to reinvent the wheel. With the kettlebell gym, like I said, I tried to reinvent the wheel when I could have literally done the exact same thing with a CrossFit logo on it and mm -hmm. been twice as successful, twice as fast. Sure. And um, so the biggest thing I think is just trying to s focus on what needs to get done and only do that. Mm -hmm. So if you need to name, name a, a program, you just come up with the name of the program. Mm -hmm. 
you don't necessarily give yourself a timeline or anything like that. You just need to just execute it and make that your goal to finish. So is it like the first thought that comes to your head or is it like a gut feeling or is there a way to know just like, yep, that's the one, let's go? Uh, well, put it this way. If, if you had a wonderful, if I had a wonderful product or you had a wonderful program and it was called something dumb, but the sales copy was perfect, mm-hmm. it wouldn't matter. Right. You're basically, you'd be able to sell it and it'd be, it would just happen. Yep. Uh, the name, the name of the product isn't what's going to ch- uh, change someone away or scare them away. It's not going to get someone hooked instantly because if you have an awesome name and a worthless sales letter, then no one's going to buy it. Totally. So I, it, it's irrelevant stuff. You just got to pick something and move on. Yeah. And if it does work great and it is is doing well, then you can do split tests and see if changing a name can increase conversions. But until you have traffic and you still you see something moving, you're just wasting your time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's just not not a relevant thing. I helped a. Uh, a friend, we're doing a partnership on a product, and you know, we took something that he had made years ago and re reinvented it, rewrote it, relaid it out. And he wanted to spend days like thinking about the names. And I'm like, no, just use the <laughs> chapter names. The chapters are now the products. Yeah, dude, yeah, this and, could be like that's your that's part of your sales page too. The chapters yeah. are your are your bullet points. For yeah, yeah, exactly. for sure. And just keep it simple, stupid. Yep. And then outsourcing is huge too. Like I, I'm a I'm an okay writer, but I'm not a strong writer. So when I first made the sales page uh, for the the tournament product, I dumped down you know, 18 pages of just my thoughts and emotions and feelings on how I wanted the page to flow. Mm-hmm. And it was terrible. If I put that up on the internet, it wouldn't have sold a thing. But mm-hmm. then I found, I just Googled online, like using Fiverr and using Upwork and things like that. Salespeople, sales copywriters, picked a couple that made sense. The one I liked the most, I tested. It did a little bit of sales. So then I took that concept and I found a more expensive, better write, a writer who might have been uh, from a referral or something like that. Or even just higher up on on the scale of different um, Upwork channels, and mm-hmm. I told, said, "Here's a sales page that works. Make it better." And we did it again. Mm-hmm. So the whole process is is also understanding that one shot out the door is not the end all be all by any means, and you're going to have to do, take renditions of it and keep working on it and keep massaging it till you find that the flow that you're happy with. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I know we have a very super limited time here. You got to run, but I do want to touch on one last subject here and that's, um, the affiliate side of things. Mm-hmm. I want to know how you actually find affiliates. Cause it's, it's not real, you know, it, I understand the concept of it's, it's pretty easy to drive traffic to this offer if you have a bunch of affiliates driving traffic, but how did you initially go out and find those affiliates and get them on board? So definitely I lucked out with that. My brother's in the industry of, of exercise. Uh-huh. So I was able to, he was able to use it. was able to use him to test things hmm. on his list. And then people saw him testing things and went, what are you doing? I want to sell that because everyone's always looking for new offers. So the, the best way I could put it like this is people now are reaching out to me. Like I used to reach out to my brother and saying, Hey, I have this product. Check me out. I'm cool. I'm special. Um, it's kind of a cold email. So what you need to do is look, get on programs or softwares, um, networks where there are affiliates. So ClickBank, mm-hmm. software projects, ClickSure, there's probably a bunch more out there that are, are very similar, but I know software projects, ClickBank, and kind of ClickSure are the big three that I can think of top of my head. Right. Those ones, you click on the category that you are selling in, and then you get the email address or the website from every single one of those, and then you find out who those people are, and then you write them a personalized email that's attention-grabbing and uh, reaching out to them, sharing that you're willing to do pretty much anything to have them test something. And I would imagine once they get in or if they just see that you're giving away almost all of your money up front on these front front end sales, uh, it's kind of a no brainer for a lot of these guys. They know they can push a lot of traffic. Yeah. And, and well, they're, they're also going to test it too. the smarter ones have sure. multiple lists. So they'll use a, a weaker list to test something. And if it does somewhat well or better than average, then they they bring it up to a stronger list. But yep. the whole point is reaching out. If, if you got on there and reach out to 100 people, someone is going to respond to you. Yeah, and that's the thing that one person can bring your whole income, whatever, you know, it could take that whole business and just just blast it up. Yeah, exactly. And, and if not, it's a stepping stone. Like like I had the luck of my brother who had built up these affiliate networks of people for for like three or four years. And I, you know, I'd known them all. when We went to meetings together and stuff like that, but I never actually made a company. So I just kind of sat there and smiled. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. Wasted my time staring at possibilities. Then I should just have been working. Right. Um, but the. Uh, the whole idea is that if you just spend time with somebody, even if they're like a level 10 out of, you know, and you want to work, you want to work with level one people and they're level 10, doesn't matter. Start there, make best friends with them. And then all the level nine people that know him are going to then start talking to you because they're interested. So you can, if you start associating circles, you can start climbing the ladder and building up your, 
you know, how your quality of who you are as a person and as a business yeah. just by starting somewhere. So reaching out to a bunch of people in affiliate networks is number one, being accessible and available in affiliate networks. Is number two, I would make sure that you're on an affiliate network. So that way they, they are, they're confident they're going to get paid. Cause that's the one thing that people come to me and they're like, I have this random like cart system and I'm like, yeah. I don't even know you. Trust. I'm like, sure yeah. you're writing a check. I mean, come on. So having it all available and simple allows them to do it. And people are going to be like, oh, well, it cost me 10% to be on the system versus my own credit card, which is three and a half percent. And I want to look at you and be like, you, you made $50,000. You sold $50,000 last year. Shut up. Get on there and sell five million. Yeah, sell and more, which sell system more. do you use? Which <laughs> system are, do you use for your business? So with supplements, it's harder. So software projects is a more lenient system. So I'm on them right now. Got it. Uh, I'm, of course, looking at different opportunities to, to work with my own cart on, for certain aspects. But you know, software projects is like my my heart, my you know artery. It controls everything and allows me to operate my business and, and work with them. It's a phenom- phenomenal company to work with. Cool. cool. Now, we want to respect your time. I know you only had about 30 minutes with us. So uh, two more questions, and they'll sure. be kind of quick. What's, plenty of time. It, oh, plenty of time then. <laughs> don't <laughs> we'll tell, we'll don't tell us that. <laughs> um, what's one book that you feel like you just have to read every single year? Like it's on your bookshelf. It's always in your head. Do you have a book like that that you'd recommend? Oh, gosh. No, because I don't want to obsess over one thing. <laughs> How about what's the what's the first one that comes to mind? Something you really like? You got maybe it got this simple mindset in your head, puts you on the spot. I can tell you, there's not one there's not one simple answer that makes everything. <laughs> I stumped them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's just like there's there's dozens and dozens and dozens of books. And yeah, everything yeah, yeah. All, um, um, you know brings into one brings into the idea of it. Hmm. Um, if you just relied on one book and you wanted to follow that one philosophy, you're kind of I think oversimplifying something. There's of course a lot more to it than that. But, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. you're def- definitely right there. It sh- you feel like it should be something, one thing that says, oh, do this one philosophy and work it that way. No, I just, I think stop searching so much on for, for, for information and shiny objects. You know, it, it add things to your repertoire, but put them on your side pocket because they're not like an end all be all. It's just ammunition in your, uh, in your pocket. You don't need to, you don't need to stress about one thing to live by. Right. Yeah. You're more of the action taker. You're just, you're just see the thing and do it, test it. Yeah, that's that's the key to all. Because I, I yep. used to be over wor- over worried about over complicating things and making it perfect, and you know, from the ground up, it's all me kind of thing. No, mm. that's that's absolutely a waste of time. If if anything, I'd say build a company, prove the concept works on a simple scale, and then if you really wanted to, go back and make a unique brand next to it, like a mm. kind of like Ford Lincoln kind of thing. You build the fancy one later that is right. You know, everything want to be in the first place, but prove that it works in the simpler concept. I like it. Start generic and then escalate those people into buying bigger and better stuff. Fan, fancier that. things that you can create. Yeah. All right, Matt. Cool. So last question, uh, where can, where can people go after this to go learn more about you or your products or, you know, where do you want to send people after listening to this podcast? <laughs> Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> Google well, yourself and find out what you need to, what you need to be going to. Um, <laughs> my company is sciencenaturalsupplements.com. <laughs> the website is ugly. I'm making it better slowly. It's all about ugly sales pages and ugly videos. So I, I wouldn't stress about that whole perfect brand either. I used to try at my gym. I tried to make that perfect web page uh-huh. and thought it was all about that. It's not. Dude, I need you in my head like all the time, <laughs> just in like my ear. That's just like, chill the fuck out, Joe. <laughs> like, yeah. Stop over complicating things. You don't need to be like <laughs> a huge target size company trying to build everything perfect from day one. They waste millions of dollars on projects that don't work sometimes when you build it that way. You have to just start and let it let it grow like i don't even have a true e-commerce cart yet <laughs> we're See, literally just selling me. things on upsells on upsell system only I, i'm working on it we'll have one but i haven't found the one that is fits my fits my jive yet that i like and when i do we'll, we'll implement it but just <laughs> i love it one because thing, one thing at a time i have so many i know so many freaking people we both do and we all do and they just want to build this big elaborate shopify woocommerce all this stuff you know with these products and this store and looking at it's crazy you're just doing it just like <laughs> it's ghetto man and i love it, is, it and it's, it's working it's the way it's the way it grows like for example on infusionsoft I, I like the software and all and i love the fact that you can build these elaborate campaigns but I think I have, I think after building it like 12 different times, trying to make it so like if you're an international customer and mm-hmm. if you're from Canada versus uh, Jamaica versus our Alaska, you know, all these different little variables mm-hmm. to try and send different emails. You know what I did? I yeah. just stopped it all, made one flow and it started making more money. 
Yeah, and, I believe it. Yep. Less worry in your mind, things, you know, broken systems, all that. Exactly. Because the other thing, too, is people are overanalyzing data, too. They're like, I got 100 customers and two of them are from Alaska. <laughs> so it's just absolutely silly how much they're working to um, – <laughs> you gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I got the doorbell and the dog's going crazy. Go you ahead. must have the ring on your door, like the ring app thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I have that at my sure. house and I noticed that tone. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you, Cody. Yeah. It was a good time, man. Love it, guys. All you right. have a great day. See you, All buddy. man. See ya. Thanks. Bye. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast. Now, if you don't know already, myself and my partner, Joe Fear, every single week we put together this killer weekly newsletter that's completely free. If you go to theweeklyprofit.com, you can get on this weekly newsletter. And what we do with this newsletter is we scour the internet. We read every piece of content, listen to blog posts, uh, check out new software and tools, and we distill down the best of the best into a weekly newsletter and deliver it directly to your inbox every single week. So head over to theweeklyprofit.com and make sure you're signed up to receive that weekly newsletter. You're going to love it. Thanks so much again for listening to the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. We'll see you in the next one.